Man, what a meal! What a meal! <laughs> My goodness. And there's more of it coming. There is much more coming. And we certainly hope you're in, uh, enjoying your meal tonight. So we've got an exciting call to action that we'd like to share with you right now. That's right. Uh, you may know the name Medrick Cousineau and his service dog, Ty. That's right. They might look familiar to you. It might be because you watched them uh, receive an Inspiring Lives Award in the spring. Mm -hmm. Or you may have seen them featured in one of our Mental Health Minutes on uh, CTV News at 5. Regardless, I guarantee you'll want to learn more about their compelling story, especially after watching this video produced by our friends at AIG. Direct your attention to the My screen. My PTSD is a result of a search and rescue that happened 500 miles off the coast of Newfoundland. We were involved in uh, rescuing two American sword fishermen and uh, they needed a medical evacuation. The two men had been sucked through a hydraulic line hauler. They had uh, catastrophic injuries. You know, the conditions were deplorable, high winds, unbelievable sea state. I guess I got to stare into the very depths of hell it was impossible, uh, you know, the overhead wires, the antennas, the, the gear, you know, all of our standard procedures went out the window. You know, we just knew we had to do it. Sometimes, you know, the stakes are human lives. We got both of them off the vessel um, alive and uh, unfortunately, uh, one of the men succumbed to his injuries uh, about 12 hours later. By 1991, I was, uh, in a pretty pretty dysfunctional place and, and, and I had to leave the military. I, I couldn't get near the helicopter. Back then, you know, in the mid 80s, they didn't know what they know now. 60% of the people that are diagnosed with serious PTSD are diagnosed with three from what I call the laundry list. Depression, anxiety, panic, suicidal ideation, anger, rage, night terrors, dissociative episodes, hypervigilance, intrusive thoughts. If that doesn't sound like a, uh, a real pretty place to operate from, I can tell you from years of experience, it's not. I guess I'd been standing in a checkout line and a uh, person behind me had reached out and tapped me on the, the shoulder. You know, here's a sweet little old lady. She wanted a copy of a magazine and I did a snap 180 with my fist cocked and take a swing at whatever it was that was behind me. And it just happened to be somebody's grandmother. Then I pulled a major anxiety attack, bailed out, left the car, just gone. And, uh, you know, those kind of experiences are, are being that disoriented or, you know, are part of the reason why you cut off being in public. I had battled uh, for two and a half decades uh, some pretty ugly things, the night terrors, the depression. It was a horrible, ugly place. My life changed forever on the, uh, the 6th of August, 2012. And that was the date that I got paired with uh, my service dog, Ty. No snap. No snap. She has been, in some ways, the best therapist I've ever had. When we go out in, in public and she's in her vest and she's working and she's kind of her calming influence that she is. And then other times when we're here at home and we start playing around, just being a goofy dog, sometimes even just that is, is so important because you laugh. Dogs have an amazingly acute sense of smell. She can smell the change in your biochemistry. That's what makes her so uniquely qualified and so valuable. She's been trained to watch my back in public. And there was an incident in the airport and she had moved herself around behind me. And I turned around and there was Ty watching my back and the lady who was right behind us, she wasn't real happy. But I tell you, I was because Ty was that barrier. And I tell you, when, when I realized what it was she was doing, I knew that I wasn't gonna have a repeat of the Walmart incident. Once my wife and I became so convinced of what Ty was able to do for us, uh, we just knew we had to get other people the same kind of help. Let's go bank. The January after Ty had walked into our lives, we decided we'd put together an initiative. It's called Pause for Thought. And we've reached out to the Royal Canadian Legion and now the Mental Health Association of Nova Scotia. 
and both of those groups are uh, are engaged in, in helping us provide service dogs to uh, veterans and now uh, first responders, the police, RCMP, fire, uh, assault and abuse survivors are going to be able to access the kind of help that Ty has given me. What's a human life worth? How do you say to somebody, sorry, we can't come up with $5,000 to, to save your life? In almost three decades, I've never had a therapist show up at 4.30 in the morning and wake me up and say, it's going to be okay. You know, but you know, there's Ty, wet nose, floppy ears, big brown eyes, doing her thing. So in some ways, people think it's really complicated. It's not, it's really simple. Thank you to our friends at Egg for that video. And Medrick was going to be here tonight, but he couldn't be here, so he asked me if I would please read his speech. Here's what Medrick wanted to say tonight. As you heard in the video, Ty saved my life. There's no doubt in my mind. If it weren't for here, her, I wouldn't be here today. Because of that, I started Pause for Thought, and now I match other veterans who are struggling with PTSD with service dogs. It's a process that typically costs $10,000, but I've figured out a way to do it for $3,500. Every week, I receive letters from people, not just veterans, but first responders who are suffering the effects of post-traumatic stress disorder. They break my heart. Their cries for help haunt me when I'm not able to match them with companions like Ty. It's especially difficult when firefighters, city police officers, EHS attendants, and 911 operators reach out for help. Why? Because these are the people who run in when the rest of us are running out. They are the people who put their lives on the line each and every day they simply go to work. Right now I have six puppies in training. They will soon be ready to be matched with a Nova Scotian in need. A Nova Scotian just like, a Nova Scotian just like me who can't sleep through the night or make it through a day without remembering the trauma I was exposed to while in the line of duty. Tonight we're asking you to step forward to help make more matches happen between service dogs and first responders. We'll be working together to help first responders have a second chance at life by matching them with a companion like Ty. So what do we need from you? We're asking for donations of $300, the same price you paid for your ticket here tonight. If we receive 12 donations, we'll be able to make a match. I'll be able to give a first responder what they need to survive. The facts speak for themselves. No one living with PTSD who has been matched with a service dog has taken their life by suicide. No one. I hope you will help us reach our goal of making as many matches as possible. It's a Christmas gift like no other. It's a gift that truly saves lives. That's the speech Medrick was going to deliver on his own this evening to all of you. He was so excited to be coming here with Ty and his wife. And he was coming here despite the fact his 26-year-old daughter has been in palliative care for the last 26 days. Because she told him to do it. She wanted him to do it. For the last 26 days, he and his wife and Ty have been going into the hospital room to visit Lindsay and sit with her. But this morning when they went in, Ty didn't want to leave. Ty jumped up on the bed with Lindsay refused to leave. Medrick and his wife went home and he was putting on his donated tuxedo that Tip Top so graciously provided for him to wear here tonight and he had a call from the hospital and the doctors told him he should cancel his plans and come in because she probably wouldn't make it through the night. Medrick is a true hero and he wanted to be here so badly. I told him I would deliver his message and I'd really like to call upon two people to speak in his place who completely understand what this is we're trying to do. Dr. Howard Conter and his wife Karen, love it if you would please come up and talk to us a little bit more. Uh, 
as you can see, I, I'm Karen Conter. Um, Karen was much smarter. She stayed in her chair. What you've seen tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is not an uncommon situation with what we deal with. It's my honor to speak to you tonight as a board member of the Tema Contra Memorial Trust, a national charity that deals with PTSD for all our first responders. Police, fire, military, EMS, 911 dispatchers are people who are affected by PTSD to the point of one in five to one in four of these people through their career will end up suffering from severe PTSD. I think the key takeaway message tonight after seeing this amazing video and how strong this gentleman is, is the last six months, 26 first responders in Canada have taken their lives to suicide. That's police, fire, military, and EMS. That's the figure that drives what we do on a regular basis. We've been lucky enough through the Tema Conner Memorial Trust to work with Star Dobson and the Mental Health Foundation to try to help our first responders. Our tagline at Tema is that heroes are human. And all those first responders out there, ladies and gentlemen, are our heroes. I honestly believe we live in the best country on this planet. And the freedoms that we are afforded on this planet on a daily basis, our security, our freedoms are provided to us by our first line workers. Without police, without fire, without EMS, without military, we would not live the special lives that we do as Canadian citizens on a day-to-day -day basis. The true meaning of this video with this gentleman and his service dog is the fact that we need to do more to support our first responders. We need to help these men and women do the job they're trained to do. It's hard to believe that figures show that only 20% of paramedics across this country will retire as paramedics. That means 80% along the way will no longer be able to do the job and will have to switch careers. And we're not talking about financial hardship. We're not talking about not getting along with the boys at work. We're talking about the difficulties dealing with these impossible situations. What the Tema Contra Memorial Trust is all about and what the Mental Health Foundation has helped us with is all about education. What we want to talk about is nas nationally across the country to make sure that in every paramedic school, every police, fire, military academy, not only do we learn how to use the equipment, how to drive the ambulance, how to use the defibrillator, how to load the gun strategy, we have to learn the fact that PTSD, critical instant stress, is something you're going to face. Unless you have some form of education, some form of background, when you go out there, how do you accept a horrible car accident call, a rape call, a murder call? In Afghanistan, these guys who were trained so well with their equipment, they could pack the bags, they knew how to fire the guns, they knew how to follow orders, until the IED blew up the car next to them. And they lost four or five guys in their regiment, or four or five guys in that regiment were severely injured. There's an education process that's required to somehow make you understand that A, this is a possibility, and to provide for you the appropriate care, so in fact not all of these incidents will end up leading to such a difficult situation as we saw in that video. We need critical incident stress management teams, we need education, we need to take care of our human heroes. This program works. This program of providing a service dog has shown in research to work. The figures quoted in, in, in the video and in the speech talk about no suicides among people with these special, special helpers. This is something we need to do to provide help for our PTSD sufferers. We need to give these people support. We need to give them help. We need to bring them back so they can perform in, in society. They can play an important role in our society once again. And we can do that. That's what mental health is all about. Thank God over the last five to 10 years with amazing programs like Different Stage of Mind, like Festival of Trees here in Nova Scotia, we've made it acceptable to talk about mental illness. So now we need to talk about mental illness for the our human heroes, for our first responders, the people that make our life so wonderful here in Canada. To do that, please tonight, if you can, make a donation to help support 
PTSD sufferers, so in fact they will be matched with a special friend, like Ty, to be matched with a service dog so we can continue the healing process. Think about this at Christmas time. How many people do we buy gifts for at Christmas time that really and truly don't need gifts? They truly have everything. We face that every time when Karen and I go through our quote, Christmas season list. So let's think about doing it this way. Why don't we do something special this year? Why don't we make a special donation to the Mental Health Foundation in support of these service dogs and say, listen, Mr. Smith, Mrs. Smith, we love you. Have a wonderful Christmas holiday. And in your name, we've donated a significant amount of money to help one of our human heroes, one of our first responders. I think the recipients will feel great. I know you will feel great. And more, most importantly, we can all work together to help save lives. What we're talking about is very serious business. We need these people to function. We need these people to work in their professions. We need them to continue to work in their professions. We need them to provide the security that we require here in Canada. Tonight is one way to start helping these people recover from a very significant illness. I appreciate very much your opportunity to speak tonight. What you saw in that video is true. What you saw in that video is poignant. What you saw in that video actually exists. So please consider as we move forward in the holiday season and we move forward this evening, let's provide as many of these service dogs as we possibly can to our military, our EMS, our police, and our fire, our human heroes. To start the process off, the Contra family will be donating the funds to provide one service dog to one PTSD sufferer. I'd love to roll into my auctioneer role now and sell a bunch more, but they won't let me. So please, ladies and gentlemen, let's provide a tie to so many of these people suffering from such a significant illness. They deserve our support. They need our help now as we've required their help for such a long period of time. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you, doctor. You are an inspiration, and we're going to buy litters of puppies tonight, I guarantee <laughs> I hope so. I hope so. Let's just put it into perspective. As Dr. Condra said, 26 first responders take their own lives every, every year, year because of PTSD. And as Star said earlier, anybody who has been matched with a service dog like Ty yeah. has not taken their life. So imagine this, by making a donation, you are taking an active role in helping save someone's life. You can so do this. If you are up for it, if you are able to, you can make your way out into the hallway. That is where the donations are being taken. You can help first responders who are struggling with PTSD. And when we raise enough money to make another match, we'll very happily let you know all about it. Sure will. All right, the program continues. Oh, 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 what's happening? What's happening? We have another match. We have match. a match. <laughs> we have a match already. We have another match. Do we have a name? Oh, look at that. Do we have a name? Danny Chedra, who's a Danny very good Chedra. friend of the Mental yep. Health Foundation. Danny, Danny thank, you. thank you. Thank you so, Danny. so much. There he is. That is amazing. Wonderful. Again, you can make donations in the back, and we'll remind you of that a little later as well. We sure will. Enjoy your second course. We'll be back before you know it. <laughs>